Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the next video in the introductory series to robotics process automation with UiPath. In the previous video, we have seen exactly what RPA technology is, how we can leverage UiPath, what are the different tools which are available with UiPath. We have seen the orchestrator, we have seen the UiPath studio, we have seen the assistant. Okay. In case you haven't already watched this video and you are an absolute beginner, I would request you to watch the video called Introduction to RPA. I'll put the link in the description and you can refer that. In continuation to the same, today we are going to have an introduction to UiPath AI Center. We are going to see what exactly UiPath AI Center is, how we can use AI with RPA. We are going to see the various out of box models provided by UiPath. We are going to use two of the models and build two use cases in the UiPath Studio. You guys also can follow along with me. Also, we are going to discuss what are the various use cases which you can build on top of the out of box models. And all of this would be covered by a step by step demonstration. In case you want the files which are being demonstrated in this video, you can always drop me a note on the email ID which is mentioned in the description and I shall revert you with the files. Having said that, let's get started. Okay, guys, so let's get started. I'll just pull up a PPT and let us see what we are going. Okay, so just a quick background what we have covered last time. Okay, last time we have seen what exactly is a robotics process automation tool is. And we have seen that how exactly robots are capable of mimicking the human actions. Then this all now we understand that robots can do that robots can log into the application they can connect to an api robots can move file and folders open the emails do the calculations scrape the data read and write to the databases and other stuffs right so this is what we believe i believe that you guys know that robots can do but trust me there is more to what robots can do okay so that is where something come which is called the intelligent process automation till this point whatever we were talking here right so this is all the process automation which is just doing the action which the human is doing in a repetitive way the robot take the task from the human now as soon as i add the word intelligent it means now robots are capable of doing something extra from the normal automation what exactly it is that is what we call the intelligent process automation so uipath has a full suite of doing the intelligent process automation it does with the help of the technology such as artificial intelligence, computer vision, cognitive automation, machine learning to the robotics process automation project. So you might start a project with RPA, then you can always add on these technologies such as computer vision, AI and ML to your robots and make it intelligence. Okay. Now, what else is there in the UiPath intelligent process automation? Okay. It is based on the unattended robots it has also integration with the third party cognitive services like google abby ibm and microsoft also uipath has provided you some of the out of box models ai that you can use in your automation absolutely free of cost you don't need to go and develop your own model for the ai and ml there are some of the predefined models that we can use that is what we are going to see in the session that you can use and you always has an option to go and develop your own model and give that model to the UiPath. So both the capabilities and UiPath has the capability to do both of the things. Apart from this, with this continuous cycle, UiPath is committed to the AI and the cognitive journey. We're offering by NLP machine learning services, both on the cloud and on the on premises. So when I say cloud, cloud means something where you want to do it on the cloud services and on premise means where all the infrastructure is sitting within your company or within your organization. So UiPath support both the journeys on the cloud as well as the on premise. Okay. Now, this is the diagram which talk about how RPA and AI are working together in the context of UiPath. The inner circle, which you see, the blue one, that is what a traditional RPA used to do and which the robots are currently doing, right? Copying the pasting, email, filling the form, extracting the data, logging into the apps, reading and writing to the databases and all these things. 
AI puts a layer over that additional automation and make it more intelligent. For example, what happens when you have unstructured data or you have a semi-structured data? What happens when you have to do something on the documents where the documents are coming in a different, different formats? So that is where you have a document understanding is there. What happens if you want to give a UI to the user to get the input and provide the output back to the user? That is where your chatbots come in picture. You can mine the task, text to speech, forms in VDI. So for example, you are doing any automation the automation, if it is working on a local machine, we are able to do with the help of robots. But what happens if the forms or the data is available in a VDI, virtual desktop? How do I do it? That is where UiPath intelligent automation, uh, intelligent automation capabilities come in picture and make sure robot intelligent. So this diagram talk about how, where exactly the RPA stand and how the AI layer is covering and making it an intelligent automation. Okay. Now, use of AI robot to do the property valuation. Okay. You can use a robot, which is doing the property valuation for you. You get all the customer details, get his previous history, feed it into a model and the model tell you that, yes, if you are doing it for a bank, the model tells you that this person has a probability of getting a loan defaulter. So that model you can build. Inventory forecasting is a very good use cases where based on the previous historical data, you can actually tell which more product to buy, which product not to buy, which product is going to have shortage. Okay. Now resume matching. Resume matching comes for the HR use cases where you have one requirement and you have n number of CVs. Now there is a robot who goes read each and every CV. They read the CV, they read the content of the CV. They match the CV with the requirement and they tell you that yes, for this requirement, you have this number of CVs available. Purchase decision, language translation. Language translation is something which comes when you have clients or you have automation, which are not only in your country, but outside the country. For example, if you are doing something contract reading something and the reading and the contract is in some other language, how you are going to read it. So that is where the UI path out of box models come in picture. You can just use the model, pass the text to the model. It will convert the text to you and then you can do the other pieces of the automation. So language translation is also a feature which is provided by UI path out of the box model. Okay. When we talk about data. Every time I cannot have a structured data. When I say structured data, every time I cannot have a data which is in rows and columns. Sometime I get a data which is unstructured. Okay, what happens if I have invoices and I have to get the data out of the invoices? Now invoices can be of different, different format. So UiPath document understanding has that capability to do the extraction of the invoices. This slide I have taken from the UiPath intelligent automation page in uipart.com. I'll share the links to you. And there are a couple of more use cases which you can refer that how AI plus RPA is expanding the horizon of automation. Okay. Okay. So now before I just go into the two of the tools, which we are discussing, I just want to show you the slide that which are the tools available with UiPath that is making it a complete fully automated enterprises. Okay. So everything which is highlighted in blue block, these are the tools which UiPath provide. For example, if I have to do a coding, so I have Studio, Studio Pro, Marketplace, right? If I have to manage my automation, I have Orchestrator, AI Center, Test Suite, Data Services, Inside. Once my uh, bots are deployed, who is going to run? So I have robots which are attended, unattended, test robots, I have hybrid automation, I have humans in the loop. And then how do once you develop your robots are running, how you are going to engage with the business or to the stakeholder or to the customer. That is where apps, accent center, assistant and the chatbot come in picture. If we just go to the front of the cycle, we have right from the discovery. So if you are not sure which process to automate, UiPath has tools such as Automation Hub, Task Capture, Process Mining, Task Mining. These are all AI enabled tool that help you to decide that which process you should take to automate, which should not to take. So this is where UiPath has completely able to manage the fully enterprises. And the lower half of the slide talk about how exactly UiPath is offering to the enterprises. 
you can have a automation cloud where everything is running on UiPath cloud. You can have a public cloud of your own where UiPath just do the deployment. You can have a hybrid cloud where uh, some part on on-premise, some part of the cloud, and you can have a model where everything is working on-premise. So UiPath not only is everything on the cloud, but it also provides you with a flexible uh, deployment approaches. So that is why RPA, why that is why UiPath in RPA. Okay. Let's move forward. Okay. So as of now, you guys might be knowing only this thing that we have studio, we have orchestrator and we have robot studio. We develop the automation. We deploy it to orchestrator with the help of orchestrator. I send it the command and the robot is executing. That is what we have seen. Now, what else I can do? So this is the base of the UiPath development studio orchestrator and the assistant. Assistant is also called UiPath robot sometimes, but the thing is same. Okay. Now, what is the next step? Once you have understood this one that what exactly robots can do now, how I can add AI to my robotics. Okay. So for example, if you have a process where you have to run and analyze some of the uh, design patterns, you have to get some inside, you have to make complex decision. And all the complex decision has to be done with the help of AI. Now, how does RP and AI come in picture? What happens whenever there is some AI model or any machine learning model is there, it requires data. Now, who is going to get the data? If I write the AI model for myself, who is going to get me the data? I require someone who is going to get me the data, do the hard lifting of the data, scrape the data from all the sources, dump it to somewhere, and then I can run any AI or the ML model. Because whichever model I run, I would require data for it. So how RPA and AI are working together. So RPA does the hard lifting of the data where it collects all the data from the different different sources, be it a email, web, database, semi-structure, unstructured data. It gets all the data. The data is get, getting input to the AI model. And now AI run, AI run the artificial intelligence on it and then provides you the insight or provides you the data. So between them, both of when AI plus RPA are working together. That is where there is something which is called UiPath AI Center, which is coming up. And this is what we are going to see today that how you can utilize AI Center in your automation, what is UiPath apps and how all of this. Okay. Okay. So before going to the AI Center, let me show you where exactly we find it. So first of all, we go to, we go to the automation cloud, which is cloud.uipad.com okay so this one you all of you might be using this one cloud.uipad.com where you have the orchestrator all the robots everything is controlled by this central site okay now if you see here i have the ai center here if you are not having the ai center here that might be because you are in the community edition community license of uipath so what you have to do is you can always request for a 60 days enterprise trial. Okay. So whenever you go and request for a 60 days enterprise trial, you will get something which is called the AI center. Okay. So all you have to do is just go to the licenses and click on the request enterprise trial. If you can do that. So for example, if I go to my admin section, okay, you just go to your admin. And if you go to the licenses, I am in my enterprise plan plan so i have this option of ai center if you are not getting this ai center so that might be because you are in the community edition of uipath and you are not having this option what you have to do is you have to go to the admin click on the licenses and here somewhere you would find a button which says request enterprise trial okay as soon as you do that uipath will give you an enterprise trial for 60 days that again, you can increase based on uh, your requirement. You can write to UiPath and increase it. But for initially, you get it for 60 days. You just have to go to the admin, go here and say request for enterprise trial. That's it. And now once you have got this, you just have to come back to the home, which is this one. And here, if you see, as of now, I have this services, which is enabled, right? So if you go back to the admin, you have this one in the tenant setting, which all things you want to see on this left hand menu is controlled by the tenant setting. 
I have created a tenant for myself, which is called the orchestrator service. You just have to go here, click on the tenant setting, which is this pencil icon. And in here, you would see an option that which all things you want to use. UiPath apps is free for you, but to use the AI center, again, I'm repeating, you should have the enterprise licenses and you can always get it from there. So you just have to come here in the tenant, click on the pencil icon, select this AI center, and you should get AI center here. And you would get it here and it should be visible on the left side menu also. Okay, so now, what exactly is AI center? So you can meanwhile just request for the enterprise trial and you can get the AI center. Meanwhile, we just cover up the presentation. I'll just go back to my PPT. Okay. And let us just go to the slide which talk about the AI center. Okay. Now, if you are looking a way to automate beyond the rule-based processes, we have already seen what exactly rule-based processes, right? Where we have fixed set of steps. The robot is going, reading the Excel, downloading the data from some website, clicking on some X, Y, Z point and continuously doing the next step. If you are trying to add more capabilities of AI and ML to your automation, that is why AI center come in picture, okay? So now when I say AI and ML, many of you are say, uh, we might be thinking that I require a data science background or I require some different background to do that, right? Nothing is required. You just have to enable the model. You just have to give the input to the model and the model will directly give you the output, right? So that is where AI center will come in picture when you want to add some of the machine learning capabilities to your automations, okay? Now, these are the four major functionalities which are provided by the AI center. First of all, use of any ML models you can choose. We are open. When I say we are open, this means UiPath, okay? You can use the predefined built-in models which are available by UiPath, provided by UiPath, called the out-of-box models. Or you are free to build your own ML model and deploy the same ML model to the UiPath. So both of the possibilities are there, okay? Once you have the ML model in place, all you have to do in your automation, you just have to simply drag and drop the ML model. That's it. It is as simple as that. The configuration is absolutely simple. You just have to drag and drop. I can show, I will show it to you by a real time demonstration that how easy it is. Next, monitor and manage. So once you have created the model, once you have used it in the business processes, the robots are using it how you are going to manage it. So that is where also AI center will help you to monitor and manage and continuity, con improve continuously, right? Everything, if you have some automation, which the human is doing, and as well as the robot is doing, you can also introduce humans in the loop. You can have a loop where as the data set changes, as the prediction changes, as the accuracy is changing, you can retrain the model and redeploy the model. So that means you have always an option to provide the versions. You can have different, different version of the ML model. All of these features and functionality is provided by the UiPath AI Center. Okay. Let us try to see a small example of AI Center. And okay, so I go back to my UiPath Studio. Okay, this guy. In my project folder, this, I have created a simple sequence. Okay, let me go here and I create a new sequence and I call this sequence as object detection. Okay, now what is our objective here we want to do? So for example, I have got, let me go to this folder. I have placed two images on my folder. Okay, image one and image two. I want to write an ML model. I want the ML model to classify and detect what exactly is happening in this image. How many people are there? How many tables are there? I want it to identify the laptops, the cups, the chair and table. So it might, you might think that, yes, this is a big task and we might require to write a lot of code. But trust me, it's just a simple drag and drop. Okay, so what you have to do? You just have to go to the home of this automation cloud. This is where all the magic happens, okay? Once you have enabled, you will see something which is called the UiPath AI Center, okay? You just have to click on this guy and everything 
UiPath make it very easy. So if you can see, if I ask you, if you have to create a new project, where should you click it, right? So if you just scan here, you could see there is a button which says create project. Okay. I go here and I click on create project. Now, what is the name of the project? So let's say I want to build an automation where I want to detect the objects. Okay. I will hit a project description that what you are intended to do and i'll just him simply go and hit create what is happening now uipath has created a ml ai project for me now uipath is asking me we have created an project in the ai center you tell us do you have your own ml model or do you want to use the one which are provided by uipath okay as of now, we are just focusing on what are provided by UiPath, which is nothing but the out of the box models. Where exactly it is, you just have to go to this one, which says ML packages, and you would have two options. First option is upload a zip if you have the model. Otherwise, I want to use the ML model developed by UiPath. Yes, that is what we want to do. Okay. I simply go here and click on this button. Now, UiPath will show you all the things all the models which are developed by uipath so when i was talking about the slides you have seen that i was talking about language translation language comprehension language analysis everything is available here right so let us let's try to use some of them so i will try to use the image one which is called the image analysis i go here and if you see uipath has given me two models that for the image analysis uipath is saying i have got two models one model is image moderation and other is object detection. Okay, so which one I am interested? I am interested in object detection. I just go here. You have to select the package version, which is one. As of now, you can just click on submit. And you have to just give it a package name. Let's say detection of the object once i am going here so all you have to do is click on this ml packages it will be uh, undeployed because i have not started the deployment yet okay the next is you have to go to the ml skill and you have to tell uipath that which skill you want to implement here okay so i go here create new i say that detect object again use the ml package it's all just a configuration thing and you have to just hit on create this as soon as you create it you would see that uipath will say that the skill is deploying it will take around 10 to 15 minute max to get it deployed okay once it is deployed you should be able to see the skill on the ai center dashboard here okay here so if you will see here this detect object we have just created this is the object detection which i have created just before this session so if I go to my ML skill, I can see that it is available. Available means this is ready for me to use in my automation. If I go back here to the AI center, you would see that this one would be still in the deploying phase, right? It is deploying. It will take 10 to 15 minutes. So this would be available. Then you should be able to use it in your automation. Okay. Now let us try to go back to the folder and write an automation. Okay. Before we write an automation, I have got these two images in the input folder. Before you start any automation, you have to go to the project, go to the dependency, click on the manage. Okay. And so, for example, if I have to do an Excel automation, do I need to add an Excel dependency here? So, if I go to my activities, as of now, I do not see the word activities here. Why? because i have not included the word package so for example if i do have to do an ml automation on the ui path do you think that we require to add the dependency of ml activities what do you guys say yes or no similarly for the ml you should always use the ml activity pack and what it is you just have to go to the manage go to the all packages and just type here ui path dot ml okay so this is the guy which is uipath dot services dot ml activities and this is by uipath 
that means if i have to work with the ai center i would have to use this activity pack okay you have to just click on it install and save it that's it now if you go to the activities you would have the activities for the ml skill if i go here and i say ml skill if you will see now i have got a section on the services which is called ml skill now to use the ml skill it is absolutely simple as using the excel automation you just have to drag and drop it here and this is self explanatory it is asking me which one you want to use so if you see here as of now i am only getting object detection and sentiment analysis if you go here in the ai center i am having three detect object object detection and sentiment analysis but can anyone tell me why in my ui path i am only getting two and not three why i am not getting the one which is available here can anyone tell me on the chat that why we are not getting this model as of now to use okay okay aditya says it is not deployed right deploying mode initially right because actually it is you haven't added the model okay so it is important to understand guys if you'll just go here if you go to the ml skill you see that it is still in the deploying stage okay once it is deployed it should be available to use in the ui path studio tool okay so if i just go here i can search for the object detection that's it now if you will see ui path is telling me tell me the path of the image to be analyzed ui path says me that to work on this model i would give you uh, you have to give me a file which is input and in the output i will give you a json object and that will have all the classification details okay i tell you i path okay fine let me give you the input okay so input is in a file and output it is in a json file format okay so if i just go here in my folder in this same one i have in the input folder i will just go back and show it to you guys i have in the same project folder i have one input and the output is blank so i want ui path to classify this thing so i just get this path i just do a shift right click copy as path and i am just giving this path to the this one okay i will take a variable okay i have to store a path guys what type of variable should i create what should be the variable type i want to store a path okay i say str what should be the type of this variable if i want to store a path so the right answer is that we would have to store it in a string so i just go here and i pass it in a string so that's mean absolutely simple i have just given ui path i am telling ui path that this is the path where you have to get the image so what would be the input now the input for the ml skill would be this guy okay now i want to create an object of json response how do i create an object of json response i can create a variable but i don't know what to select here ui path is a very intelligent tool it has given me whole feature you just have to come here and hit control plus k right and you just have to say response now the beauty of ui path it will automatically create a variable for you right which is this one right now ui path is telling that i am going to give you a json response we have created a variable which is called a response which is again of the type string that means to utilize it further i would have to convert this string to a json string okay so understand this guys we are telling this model that we are giving an input file the model says we are giving you a json response now the json response ui path is again stored in a string to use it further in our automation to know all these details what we have to do we would have to convert this string into json okay so for converting a string into json we have an activity which is called deserialize json okay this guy deserialize json this is a simple activity and again if you are using an extra activity we should have always add the activities right so json activity is a part of if you just go to manage packages you just have to go to the all packages and you have to type here web dot this one web 
API. Okay, this one uipart.webapi.activity. So this is the guys. If you will see here, it says JSON, REST, SOAP, and XML. UiPath models the ML skill is giving the response in a JSON format. So that's why I have added this dependency, web API dependency. You have to use the deserialization here. Now, if you just go to the properties, the it is absolutely simple. What is the input? The input would be the response which I get from the ML model. And what with the output? I hit Control plus K and I just create a JSON object. Okay. That's it. My job is done. Now, if I just this run this automation, let us try to see what happens. If I put a debugger here, breakpoint. So I am telling UiPath that I am providing an image. The UiPath has taken the image and it has provided me the response. Okay, this is the response. Now, if I just go here and I say debug the file, let's try to see that what UiPath is doing internally. Because if you understand any one of the model, you should be able to use any of the model out of box model in your automation. Okay. So we'll just wait for the automation to fire up. Okay. My robot and the assistant is working. How do I know? I can see it in the bottom that this here. Now it should come and I can go here and see it has now hit the breakpoint. Okay. Now if I just click on step into you can see my JSON object UiPath has given me this guy. Okay. Whatever response I have, whatever input I have given to the image, the image input I have given, the model has written me this output, right? It says there is a person, there is one more person, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven person. There is a cup, there is a chair. There is a potted plant. There is a laptop. So all of these things it says, right? And then it says that this is the image. But if you are working for a business or anyone, right? How would those guys be able to understand this? So that means we would have to present it in some presentable format, right? I cannot give them the JSON output of this one. I say that, okay, this is the one. You just go and use this. But to use anything further automation, you would have to understand the output. So if I just copy this output to a clipboard, okay, I just open it in a notepad plus plus just understand this simple thing that how we read the JSON and then you are, you should be all good in writing all the ML models. Okay. This is absolutely a simple thing, guys. That's not a rocket science. I just open the note roll plus and I'll hit paste here now. UiPath has given me this as an output. Okay. It says that I have something which is called predictive class and I have something which is called a byte array. So what exactly is a byte array? Byte array is nothing but an image converted to an array of bytes. Okay. So if you can convert this byte array to an JPEG, you should be able to get the complete image, right? So this model has given you two outputs. One is the predicted class and other is the byte array. So whenever the JSON object is written from the model, it will give you the predictive class and it will give the byte array. Now, the last thing is I have to just simply convert the byte array to an image and that's it. Okay. Now, how can I convert a byte array to an image? So to convert a byte array to an image, we have something, an activity which is called base64 decode. That's it. So it's absolutely simple. You just have to tell where is the base 64 image and what is the folder path. So what is the folder path where you want to create, store the image? I say to UiPath that I want to store the images in this folder, okay, which is this one. And now UiPath will ask me, okay, I'll store the image in this folder. Tell me where is the uh, base 64. So just now I have seen it is in the JSON response and in which one byte array. So you just have to go here and you have to type here. What is the object? I'll just go here. You see JSON object. Okay. In here. Where exactly it is in the double quotes. You just have to pass that what exactly it is, right? So exactly it is the byte. Sorry, byte array. 
just now at the beginning we told that ui path do the hard lifting of the job so if i just go here to one more automation this is the exactly the same automation we are using the object detection getting the json output getting the byte code of the predictive predicted byte array and then using the base 64 decode okay what I have done is I have kept two images on my folder, image one, image two. So I have write, written an automation using the same ML activity here, where I am reading both the images from the folder here and in the object detector, converting them. So if I just go here in the main and I say, run the automation, go here and say run. Now what would happen? UI path will run the automation it will read all the images which are available in this folder. Okay. As of now, I have kept two images. It will read all the images one by one. It will pass it to the model. The model will output me a byte array. We have converted the byte array to an image and we have stored the image back to the folder, which is called the output folder, right? So we'll just wait for the robot to finish the execution. So this indicates that my robot is working. Okay. So we'll just wait for the robot to complete its execution and then we can go back and check the output. So now I have only two images. I can go to the output. I, my execution is finished in 37 seconds. Let me go back to the folder. I hit a refresh and you can see now my output folder is having two images. If I just open any one of the image, you can see my model has classified that this is a person, this is a person, this is a person, chair, 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 this is a potted plant, this is the cup, and this is the response which I was getting in my JSON object also. And this is the byte array, that is the predictive byte array. This predictive byte array is nothing but the image, right? So if you will see here, now I was able to identify this one. So in my folder, I have kept this image also. So if I just go back to my model and I just open the other image from the folder, which is this one, you can see that I have provided this image as an input and the model has provided me this thing as an output. That means it is able to identify person. This is a person, this is a dining table, this is a bowl, this is a bottle, this is a person. Now, as per the output, okay, along with the output, the model also provide a confidence score, okay? The confidence score is between zero to one. One means it is 100% sure that it is and zero and zero to one, it increases and decreases as per the zero to one, right? That's a scale. So this one for the chair, it is 30, 0 0.36 means it is 36% sure that this is a chair. But if you are not sure, you can rely on it. But for let's say some of this one, it is 99% sure that these two are person, person, right? So model also give you the uh, identification as well as the this number. Now just think what else you can build with this automation. So first of all, tell me in the chat, guys, do you find this model interesting? So do you think, is it easy or is it tough? What do you guys say? Let me know in the chat, guys. I'm just waiting for some of the answers. Do you guys think that you can be, you should be able to make? Yeah. Okay. It's easy, right? Compared to the, yes, yes, it's absolutely easy. So you just have to pass the image path. You just have to use the ML skill and you just have to deserialize it and decode it, right? This we are doing because we have to use the output in our way. Okay. Similarly to this, if you found this easy, right? And interesting also, now you can write an automation where actually you can get the data from a source. It can be in the email, it can be from a website, it can be from any source, right? You can write an automation where you are receiving, let's say 50, 100, 150 emails. And along with it, there is an attachment. In the attachment, you have an email. So you use a get Outlook mail message activity. Download the attachment, save it in a folder. Write an automation to read each of every images and tell me that what are these things. Use cases, when you talk about use cases. So for example, vaccination drive, okay? Or any of the distribution center. You have, let's say 50 item in the stock. 
so there is a whole big queue of people which is standing right now you want to count the number of people what you can do is you can just simply click a photo send it to the model the model evaluates tell you that in this picture there are this many cars this many people and the use cases now are you can just think of the use cases so that is why at the beginning i told right it is rpa plus ai you just have to introduce ai to the rpa so now rpa will do the hard lifting of getting the images putting into the folder reading it so this is all rpa right reading it from there and i have just introduced an ai ml skill and this was as simple as just using it okay now if you see i have deployed one more model here which was called the sentiment analysis okay sentiment analysis is a very good model and it has multiple use cases so i want you to i want you to have a look also at it okay what i have done for this sentiment analysis don't worry i'll tell you this uh, explanation also it's a very simple one okay i have an excel with me if you are looking at this excel i have got this feedback randomly from google play store okay i went to google play and i copied paste some of the feedbacks which the user has put now let's say i am a company on the daily basis i am getting numerous thousand lakhs of feedbacks from the customer how do i know what are the customer happy or are the customer sad or are they neutral this is a whole lot of feedback as of now i have just put 20 this can be more ui path out of box model has a very very interesting model which is called sentiment analysis you just have to pass the input and it will tell you that what is the sentiment okay how do i use it i go here and i create a new sequence let me call this sequence as sentiment analysis okay i hit on create now it is again the same concept you just have to take the input so now to use the ml skill i will again drag and drop the ml skill here see this guy now if i just search on the drop down now you can see i can see my the one which i recently created now it is successfully deployed so it is available for me now the next i want to use is sentiment analysis if you go and see not all every time you have to go and run the automation from the ui path studio this has something which is called the test skill i can click on this button okay now let's say some okay i want you guys to ping me some of the customer feedback okay in the chat let us try to test this model so let's say i am somebody says happy with the service okay if i just go and click on the test skill this model will now try to see and it says that it is sentiment is positive and the confidence is 0.72 okay so let's say let me type here worst service ever guys can you just ping me some of the text for the customer service and we will just try to see that what exactly this model does okay i say worst service ever so now this model says this is very negative and it is absolutely sure okay frustrated with the delay but happy with the product okay so let me just paste it here and click on test skill okay it's it's a neutral feedback right now let us try i find it difficult to maintain okay so let us try this i paste it here and i say test skill okay it's a neutral feedback right so somebody says poor service okay i go here paste it and i say test the skill very negative okay so if you have this one so all you have to do again is you have to again provide the input string so as of now we are providing here so the input string can be in a form of again i take an assign activity you can take it from a message box you can take it from the user anyway right so what you have to do you have to just use an assign activity the input is an again a string output is a json response right the same way we see last time the same thing str underscore input so you just go here pass this input here let's say happy now this input will go here and in the json response you will get an output okay now again to use this output you have to use the deserialization 
if i go here and i show it to you this guy so this one i have already created ml skill input output again i have to use a deserialized json and once i deserialize the json i get this as the output the sentiment and i am just getting the sentiment and type printing it okay so the uses of the model is exactly similar you just have to pass the input get the output deserialize it and how do you want to use it in the further part of the automation okay coming back to my use case which i have created i have put a sample excel here in my project okay which is this one and i want the robot to give me the sentiment analysis of all these things okay let me just try to close this i'll save everything go back to here and i say run the file okay now what would happen i have taught my rp robot that you go and read the excel so how do i read the excel we use an activity which is called read range read range read the excel and provide you a data table right so the data table i have called as feedback data table now what i am doing here it's a simple automation for each item in the data table pass the feedback one by one to the model whatever response you get you just write the response back to the excel using the write cell activity c c1 c2 and i have to increment the counter so that's why using c1 c2 c3 c4 otherwise working of the model dealing with the data is exactly the same so all i am doing is reading the range of the excel iterating the data one by one deserializing the json and then printing the back okay if i go to the output i can see that it took the model 50 seconds let me go back to my folder i'll just double click this feedback analysis okay now you can see my model is able to classify me the positive negative neutral along with the feedback so this say that this is a very positive feedback very well planned in the app like the whole world top class and all i would 100 percent recommend this is very positive this is very negative comment and all these things right now what i can do next based on this feedbacks and all right i can write more automation in my ui path where i just go go to the data i can create the pivots i can uh, you know create graphs i can create images i can create actually the analysis so the idea which i am trying to pitch here is that now based on the feedback which the model has given you you can actually do a whole lot of analysis you can do the next set of automation you can have the category so let's say who has given this feedback now let's say whoever are the negative employee i want to send them some coupon so that i want to retain my employees or i want to retain my customers right so who are the very negative employees i just pick their name i send them a coupon code via an email or i just send them a sorry messages or i just send them uh, apology messages ask their further concern so now you can think that based on this simple model how many use cases you can write okay if i just talk about the one let's say this is my product i have launched in the market this i have got a feedback so the next i will write a robot which i'll simply go format it i will get all the where it is negative i will go to this person and i will send them a discount coupon of let's say 50 percent or which are the positive feedback i just send them an email saying that thank you for the feedback so that they feel connected you can have sentiment analysis on the product on the services on the restaurant anything right now i'll just take a pause can you guys tell me where else can you use this model? Any use cases which comes to your mind when you have seen this model working? Okay, I'll give you some more example. You can run this in the feed, uh, sorry, whenever we send some of the feedback forms, right? So we want the customer. So we have sent a link to the customer to provide the feedback. Now the customer is responding on the email. Now I go to UiPath, I read all the emails, I read all the feedbacks and then give back a summary, okay? analyzing the polls from the employees, social media monitoring, feedback collection through website, customer care feedback, analysis, mental health based on the social media post. Yes, so there are a lot of use cases. And if you see the amount of code, which I am writing to use this model, that is absolutely, absolutely very, very less. You just have to use one model. You just have to get past the input, get the output. And the input now again, 
can be from a data table, data source, database, emails, anywhere. Okay, this one. I will just go back to my dashboard here in the AI center. I will go and create a new project here and I select the sample, turn create. Now, if you will see here, UI path is not only restricted to the two which I have shown, there are n number of the out of box models. Okay, there is document understanding. In the image analysis, we have something called image classification. Okay, if I just go back, you have more from the uh, language analysis which is coming, right? English text classification, French, Japanese, sentiment analysis, language detection. Okay, language detection is something which is interesting. You just have to pass the language, and this model will tell you that it, it, it is Chinese, it is Japanese, it is French, whatever, right? And it is absolutely simple to use. Again, you have to just give the input and the output with the JSON. You have to deserialize the JSON and use it. Sentiment analysis is just we have used name entity recognition, French text classification, and then we have uh, language conversion also. So, language translation this one French, english to french english to german this one right so this you can write an automation for the clients who are in german you just take the contract read the input give it to the model get the english language and give the response back in german right there is one interesting one with the language which is called the hmm, this one question answering right so this is something like this it is actually i liked it so as an input, you just have to pass a paragraph to the model that American salesperson, Lincoln, Lincoln, something, right? You have just passed a big paragraph to this model. And then you have to ask a question in which year Lincoln passed away. So the model will give you 1865. So the model will take your question. It will go to the input. It will try to read it and it will give you the answer. So this is something which is called language comprehension, right? Semantic similarity. You would give two to text and it will be able to tell you whether they are semantic or not right text summarization you just have to give a whole lot big paragraph of 300 less than 300 characters and it will give you the summary of that thing whatever you have provided to the model right so this is what it has given and this is the summarized text you will get as an output string all you have to do is just go to the out of box packages click on it Install it, it will be available in your UiPath Studio. Give it the input, use the output, and use it in the next part of the automation. Okay, so now a question, guys Do you find this one interesting? Yes or no? I just want to hear you just can give me a thumbs up, you can tell me in the chat yes, no, no, yes. Okay, so that is all for this video. I would like to wrap this video here. In the next video of this series, we are going to explore the new tool which would be the UiPath apps. So stay tuned to the channel. I hope you like this video. If that is the case, please do subscribe to the channel and happy automation.